Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking all about diesel heaters. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, be sure to smash that subscribe button and also hit the like button if you like this video, it would mean a lot to us. All right, let's get started. I previously made a video about how to silence the pump for the diesel heater and it went over really well. I got a lot of positive feedback, so I thought I would go ahead and make a very thorough video about the diesel heaters and how to heat your camper van or RV. There are a lot of videos out there about diesel heaters and they have been very useful for me and I'm sure they're gonna be useful for you. I wanted to make a thorough video um, going over everything I've learned about my diesel heater. Uh, me and Kaylee have been using this thing for about a year and a half now going on two years and it has been exceptional. Um, it's something we use all the time and a key element especially if you're in Canada and you're driving around in the cold. This thing is really on for probably eight to 10 months of the year for us. So it's really important and freezing in the cold is not a fun thing. I plan on covering a lot of topics in this video. First is gonna be comparing German diesel heaters to Chinese diesel heaters. Next is gonna be installation tips. After that, I'm gonna be talking about the common problems that many people go through with their diesel heaters and how to resolve them. I'm also gonna be talking about parts that you may wanna purchase that will help with the installation or using or maintenance of the diesel heater. I'm also gonna be going over some parts that you may wanna buy to have in case something goes wrong with your diesel heater while you're on the road. These parts are all relatively cheap and easy to purchase. The last topic I'm gonna to be talking about is the things I love and some of the things that I hate about the diesel heater. First up is German versus Chinese. Um, this is gonna come down to budget for a lot of people like it did for us. Chinese diesel heaters are anywhere from about $175 Canadian to, you can get close to $300. Um, I would recommend going with something in the mid range of two to $250 on Amazon, of course. They are a lot cheaper than German heaters. So the German heaters that I'm referring to are the Webasto or the Espar diesel heaters. These are fantastic heaters. I've heard nothing but good things about them. If you want to spend um, $1,200, $1,300 on a diesel heater that has better reliability and probably customer service, I would go ahead and purchase one of those. I will link all of these in the description below if you want to check them out. The diesel heaters made by these German manufacturers are probably going to have a lot higher build quality and they are also going to be a lot more reliable. I cannot personally speak to this because I have had nothing but great reliability when it comes to my Chinese diesel heater that I purchased on Amazon for about $225 Canadian. Not everyone obviously has had that experience, but these are probably mostly due to user error and installation error since there are some tips and tricks which I'm going to get into next. If you look at photos of the Espar diesel heaters or the Wobasso diesel heaters next to the Chinese diesel heaters, a lot of the parts and the assembly itself looks very similar. So I would be actually very curious to buy all three and do a complete breakdown of each one to see about the parts and just analyze them. I've disassembled my Chinese diesel heater many times and it is actually pretty basic. It's really easy to disassemble and clean or troubleshoot if you need to. All the parts are fairly easy to replace and if you need to buy new ones, they are all on Amazon essentially. Some of them take a little longer to get in than others, so time can be an issue, but to be honest, they're pretty easy to replace for anyone who has basic knowledge of tearing stuff apart and putting it back together. Personally, I can't justify purchasing a $1,300 heater, that just seems like the price, there's something wrong going on with the price difference there. I get that quality and the components in the Chinese ones are probably a little cheaper and it's not as well built, but to be honest, that's a lot more money. I'm gonna try and see how far this Chinese diesel heater can get me and if it craps out in a year, that's fine with me. I'll go ahead and purchase an Espar or a Wabasso and then go from there. And I would honestly suggest you do the same. They're built so similarly that you can literally just swap out 
everything from the Chinese diesel heater and just drop in the Wabasso in the same spot that you've already installed the Chinese diesel heater. So that would be my personal recommendation. I'll link the one that I purchased in the description below. I would purchase one that has better reviews. There's a lot of them on Amazon, so I would read through a few of the reviews. Some of them have three star reviews and some of them have four and a half star reviews. So I would obviously spend a couple more bucks and buy one that has better reviews. I would also buy one that has a controller and a remote since those are really handy. If you do not have a diesel camper van or RV, you can also use gas as your heating source. Wabasco makes a gas heated one. You're obviously gonna be paying a premium for it or you could mount a small diesel tank. Most of the diesel heaters actually come with a small 10 liter tank that you can mount if you really wanna use diesel. All right, on to installation tips. So I have installed my diesel heater underneath the passenger seat on our 05 Sprinter T1N. It fit tight. It is a close fit underneath there, but to be honest, it worked out really well and it is fairly easy to access and maintain if anything goes wrong. That space is otherwise kind of being unused. I can actually, there's a flap on the side too that I can access the fuse and check the wiring. I also like the fact that it's on the other end of the van from where we sleep. So at night, it doesn't get too loud. It stays relatively quiet. We also have a pretty thick curtain that is partially insulated and a little bit sound deadening, I'm sure, that we pull across the front. So that helps with the noise as well. As far as noise goes, I'll put videos up of what the heater sounds like when it's on the low mode and what it sounds like when it's on the high mode, both the exhaust and the output for the fan. These things blow a lot of heat, like you would be surprised. I purchased the eight kilowatt one, but it also comes in five kilowatt and two kilowatt. So if you have a smaller area or you don't experience a lot of those temperatures like below minus 10 degrees Celsius, I would probably recommend getting the five kilowatt one since that heater is a little bit smaller from what I've read and it can fit underneath the seat a little bit better. Even the two kilowatt one may be a better purchase for you. I would look up the measurements and how much time you spend in cold weather. Installation tip number two is going to be exhaust and intake routing. I routed my exhaust from underneath the passenger seat out along the bottom of our van and pointed it back behind almost to the point of our rear tire. Routing the exhaust can be like a bit of a pain because you only have so much exhaust. You can also buy additional exhaust and muffler components on Amazon. They're only like 10 to $20. So if you want to extend your exhaust all the way out the back of the van or out to the side of the van, you could also do that as well. I would keep in mind that it's important to always have a downward slope when it comes to mounting your exhaust because water and condensation does build up inside. I actually made the mistake, I've made a lot of mistakes installing this. This is one of them. I put a little dip in my exhaust to go out because originally I wanted to go all the way out the back of the van and to the side, but I had to go over the rear axle when I went over the rear axle and out. Things worked fine for a little while. During a really cold night, a lot of condensation built up inside that exhaust and it actually gurgled. I went out in the morning and I could hear the exhaust blowing out water and it was like, so that was not a smart decision on my part. You want to make sure to always have a downward slope. I would also mount it not near any doors or windows. We tend to use this window on the side of the van quite a bit for cooking and ventilation. So I didn't want to point the exhaust out that side and have the exhaust float up right back into the van. You also don't want to have your intake and exhaust mounted close to one another because you don't want the engine sucking up that dirty exhaust and reusing it inside the engine, obviously that will cause issues down the road for sure. Another option for the exhaust is actually pointing it out the front of the van. I didn't wanna do this because if we ever run the heater while we're driving around possibly, which I have done on occasion, I didn't want wind pushing the exhaust back up the exhaust tube and causing back pressure inside the engine. That was not a good idea. Always have a downward slope, point it towards the back of the van 
for RV and away from any windows or inlets. Like I didn't want to point it out the back of the van obviously because I'm usually back there grabbing skis or snowboards in the winter and I don't want exhaust fumes just coming right into my face and also blowing back into the van. So that is tips on how to mount the intake and the exhaust on your van. When it comes to the fuel source, I tapped straight into my fuel system, which was really nice. I never have to worry about refilling another jug. With the Sprinter T1Ns, a lot of them come with the small circulating engine that is tapped into the fuel tank. I will show you footage of where I tapped into mine. There's actually a line that comes out and runs straight to a circulating engine that is designed to circulate the coolant and keep the engine warm during cold temperatures. I realize that not all vans have this and it won't be quite as easy for you, but another option is tapping directly into the fuel tank or a lot of these Chinese diesel heaters actually come with a 10 liter fuel tank that you could mount on the outside of your van somewhere and tap into that, which a lot of people do with RVs. Next up is the fuel pump. And I'm not gonna talk too much about this because I made a video all about the fuel pump, where I installed it, how to reduce the noise most importantly. So if you wanna check that out, I will link it up above here. I'll also link it in the description below. The most important thing when it comes to the fuel pump is mounting it on an angle and making sure that it is not mounted horizontally. This will cause air bubbles into the system and cavitate your pump and ruin it basically. So you wanna make sure that it is installed on a 15 to 30 degree angle. I've actually installed mine pretty much straight vertical, which has worked out really well. It might not be quite as efficient, but I haven't noticed any excess exhaust fumes coming out of the exhaust, so I think it's working fairly well. My next installation tip is gonna be using the fuel supply line that is given to you with the kit. This fuel line is the right diameter for how much fuel should be delivered to the heater itself. So if you go and buy an automotive fuel line that you think is gonna be more robust and work better, you're probably right, but it's gonna deliver the wrong amount of fuel. What I did is I actually used some automotive fuel line and I got this fuel line big enough so that the white plastic fuel line that comes with the heater can actually fit inside of it. So it protects it from any debris off the road or heat from the exhaust or anything like that. That clear fuel line can be pretty handy. You can actually see the fuel moving and if there's any air buildup, you can see where that's going through. So it does work well. Another installation tip is making sure that your muffler is orientated the right way. So you want it to go vertically so the hole on the side of the muffler is facing down. That is similar to the reason why you always wanna have your exhaust pipe on a slow downward slope. So all that moisture that accumulates inside the muffler will actually drip out of that hole and not accumulate inside the muffler causing all types of rust and problems in the future. Next up are common problems that people have with these Chinese diesel heaters and I can't speak for the Espar or the Webasto ones but I'm sure it's probably can be similar definitely. The nice thing about these heaters is you do get an error code through the controller which is honestly nice. You have an idea at least a starting point to go through and there are groups online uh, there are Facebook groups and a lot of online links. I'll link some of them below in the description actually. And they show troubleshooting for each code that the controller can show. Um, that brings me to the most common code that I think everyone gets is the error code that shows fuel isn't getting into the diesel heater. So this is a super common one. It's one that I got when my fuel pump failed because I installed it incorrectly. Actually, I installed it correctly it just eventually from all the road vibrations ended up being horizontal after a couple months driving down the road because of that rubber gasket. So my fuel pump went and I was having all these problems. It was still clicking so I thought it was still working but it just wasn't delivering any fuel it turns out. The next common issue is fan noise. So I think this has to do with probably how cheap these are. Quality control isn't great. So sometimes the fan can actually move up and down the shaft that it's on and can start to scrape along the sidewalls and start to tick. So this also happened to me and it's a fairly easy fix. All you have to do is kind of wedge, I believe I wedged um, a flat nose screwdriver in there and just you have to just kind of like wiggle the fan out a little bit. I only had to do it once and it's been working fine ever since. The next issue I'm going to talk about is carbon buildup. So 
eventually over time i've read anywhere from 200 to 500 hours with these chinese diesel heaters apparently it doesn't happen with the vasco heaters but i don't know how much i believe that because i feel like inevitably there's going to be a carbon buildup in all engines especially diesel ones because they burn so dirty i haven't had to do it yet i've been running mine for hundreds of hours so i'm expecting sometime soon i'm gonna have to do that carbon builds up inside of the engine essentially and you have to take it apart and clean it out this sounds hard but these are built so simply that it's actually very easy i will link a video below on how to do that it is very simple and this can happen to you earlier like before 100 hours if you have an overfueling problem Overfueling problems can happen from having the wrong size fuel line or having a pump that has the wrong amount of fuel delivery. So if you buy a pump that's designed for an 8K diesel heater and you put it on a 2K diesel heater, it's going to be delivering too much fuel. You're going to have excess exhaust fumes because it's not going to burn properly and you'll probably have a large carbon buildup. The next problem I'm going to talk about is over voltage. So sometimes if voltage is sent to the controller by accident if you have something go wrong with your battery or your solar system or your solar panels and an over voltage occurs that can damage your controller i also did this when i was hooking up my solar system i connected or bumped two wires wrong somehow something happened um but i sent too much voltage and my heater didn't work and I couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out, and then I ended up ordering a new controller and it worked perfectly fine once again. So that was a really easy fix and I think this does happen. So in the back of your mind, if you're like, oh yeah, I might have accidentally sent too much voltage to the controller, I would go ahead and if you've tested everything else out and everything seems fine, I would probably order a new controller. I think mine costed like $30 on Amazon and it came within like a week and a half. So simple fix, easy to do, but something to know for sure. The next one is glow plugs. So glow plugs inevitably go bad. If you guys have a diesel vehicle, you know this. Instead of a spark like a gas engine, diesel engines operate by pressure and heat, which that glow plug supplies. Eventually you're gonna have to change your glow plug. I've taken mine out and cleaned it. It is very easy to do, but I think carrying a spare glow plug would not be a bad idea. So those are the most common issues that I've read about and I've had with my Chinese diesel heater. This seems like a lot of things that can go wrong, but hopefully I'm telling you these so they don't go wrong for you. I've never had a problem with how much fuel or power my diesel heater has consumed, but I'm gonna go over how much the eight kilowatt one can consume. The thing about these diesel heaters when it comes to power and fuel consumption is they have two different speeds. They have a low maintenance speed, which is just kind of a constant low flow of heat which is probably what yours is gonna be at most of the time. When it goes to high heat is usually at the beginning when it's first starting up to bring it up to temperature and then also at the end to burn off all the excess carbon that is built up in the heater. If it is coming on in between those times, you are probably in some pretty cold weather and it needs to bring back up to the temperature that you've set the controller at. On the low setting, it is gonna use about five liters per day per 24 hours and then on the high end if it is running full out for 24 hours it is going to use about 24 liters of fuel which seems like a lot those numbers transfer to about 1.3 gallons to 4 gallons and like i said that is based on 24 hours so if it is operating just at a low speed for 24 hours it can use about 5 liters of fuel and then or 1.3 gallons of fuel and then if it is operating full out all night long which i have never experienced and i've been camping in like minus 30. i've heard it kick on a few times throughout the night but i've never noticed a large amount of fuel consumed i'm sure that not many of you are too concerned about fuel and more concerned about the power consumption which was my main concern when i first installed the diesel heater as well so this 8 kilowatt diesel heater is going to use anywhere from 24 amp hours to 72 amp hours in a 24 hour period. So like the fuel, if it is operating on, a, on the low maintenance setting, it is going to use about 24 amp hours. And if it's operating on the high end for 24 hours, it's going to use about 72 amp hours, which is quite a bit. And again, I've never experienced it operating full out for that long. At the beginning startup, when the glow plug is on, it is gonna be using a little bit more than it would for the high or the low setting, but that is because the glow plug takes a lot of heat. 
but that glow plug doesn't stay on the whole time. After the startup, it will shut off. Next up is some additional parts that you might want to consider purchasing after ordering your diesel heater. Number one is going to be a carbon monoxide sensor. That is really important. If you're leaving your heater on during the night, you're going to want to have a carbon monoxide sensor going just in case. Next up is a mounting turret. Now I didn't use a mounting turret when I first installed my diesel heater mostly because it wasn't available and it wasn't a thing. It makes maintenance a lot easier and also it protects anything heat wise around. I'll actually put links for all these parts in the description below so they're easier for you to find. Next is going to be exhaust extensions or mufflers if you want to try and make your exhaust a little more quiet or extend it out to a place farther away. If you plan on living in your van or RV full time and you want one of these Chinese diesel heaters, I would recommend carrying some spare parts with you at all time just in case something happens down the road and you need to fix your Chinese diesel heater. These parts are all really cheap and it's better to have them while you're on the road than be stuck out there and not be able to order them in or get access to them. I would recommend carrying an extra fuel pump, an extra glow plug, an extra controller. Now, you, obviously you don't have to carry all of these. I would highly suggest a fuel pump and a glow plug though, since those are two maintenance items that are probably the most commonly going to need to be replaced. Lastly, I wanted to talk about some of the things I love about the Chinese diesel heaters and some of the things I hate, just so you know if you're new to diesel heaters. First up is the fact that they only have two settings, high and low. Me and Kaylee, this will be different in every RV or camper van or wherever you're setting up your diesel heater, but for us, if we're camping and the temperature is around 5 degrees, the diesel heater is actually a little too hot and we end up opening a window, which doesn't matter too much, but it is kind of a pain um, when it's really cold of course the diesel heater performs awesome but there is that middle temperature when it's a little bit too cold where the diesel heater is actually just kicking out way too much heat and it can't go to a lower setting so i kind of wish there was three settings that it could go to or even just turn itself off if it was getting too warm one of the things i do love and i haven't talked much about is the remote control so i keep mine kind of by the bed on the other end of the camper van, but I can basically, if I wake up in the night and I'm kind of cold, I can just turn the heater on from our bed, which is really nice. I can adjust the temperature, which is perfect. Another thing I really like about these Chinese diesel heaters is the fact that you can order them on Amazon, and not only that, you can order all of the parts for them on Amazon as well. It makes it really easy to maintain it, to purchase it, and also if you need to return it. So if you buy a bad unit and you're having nothing but problems with it and it's within that 30 day period, I would just send it back to Amazon. Um, to be honest, when I was having trouble with mine right off the bat, I just ordered another one, complete new set, and I would kind of use some of those parts to like troubleshoot mine because I wanted to figure out what was going wrong. So at the end of the day, Amazon has, for the most part, pretty good customer service and a really good return policy. So if you order your Chinese diesel heater, and it doesn't work out and it's within 30 days, just return it and go buy an S-Bar or a Webasto and you can just pull it out and install it in the same place. They are essentially the same model. So that's something to know and probably something to contemplate for sure. One final tip that I would suggest that you do after you've installed your diesel heater is make sure to run it at least once a month, even if you're not using it very often. So this is during the summer months or during the winter months. If you don't camp a lot during the winter months, I would make sure to go out and just run it for a bit. Engines are made to be run and they work better. So I would just keep that in mind. You don't want that fuel stuck in the fuel lines. It's better to burn it off and let it run for a little while. It'll be much better in the long term and probably reduces the likelihood of leaving you out in the freezing cold. If you would like to follow along with me and Kaylee on our adventures, be sure to follow us on Instagram. I will link our accounts below in the description as well. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions regarding the diesel heater or you have any comments or tips that you've learned along the way, please comment below. You're not just helping me out, but you're probably going to help someone else out down the road as well. Be sure to subscribe and like this video if you liked it, and I will see you guys in the next one.